Well, here we go. Let's talk about the Fed. Let's talk about what happened yesterday when the Federal Reserve came out and put interest rates up. So yeah, we'll be able to see on the S&P 500. We're having a pretty stable day yesterday, but you can see when the Fed first of all started bringing out their interest rates and you can see Jerome Powell and the stock market moving up and down a fair bit, but overall we closed pretty, uh, well, we closed down on the day, but it was pretty flat. There wasn't any crazy moves, um, which we thought we put could potentially have. And yes, it was a, a really important day in the S&P 500. I'm not a person that you normally talks about squiggly lines on a chart and saying this is where the stock market's going to go. But it's quite obvious when you do stay at a stock market chart that we've been on a downtrend and we've been bouncing on this range going on a downtrend for a quite a while. And yesterday was quite a key point where, you know, we've been putting in lower lows and uh, lower highs and it would have been very important if we could have broken this downtrend and moving into 2023 we had that positive momentum going forward and the, the key thing was for the Fed because we had inflation out yesterday which we talked about on on this video the inflation data was very positive that was half what we needed to have a good end to 2022 moving to a positive 2023 and we got the key thing which was the inflation data and then we moved on to the fed now funny enough basically everything that i predicted in that ye video yesterday happened is not often you're able to exactly predict where the market goes but it, it did work that time so uh, yeah the fed came out with a 50 basis points hike a 0 0.5 interest hike uh, which we were hoping for and um, it was a 70 73 74 percent chance that you know people priced in that was going to happen so the majority was thinking that was going to happen and the fed did start to slow down the rates which is obviously a, a really positive thing but that was what was expected but the key thing was when jerome powell came to talk and what he said and what his expectations were going forward and that was the, going to be the key reaction of the s p 500 you can see it bouncing around a little bit here but really it just kind of we got the positive inflation data and you saw the whole market go Ugh, like it that's what we, we were expecting a little bit of um you know nervousness going into it and you know we know jerome powell is very cautious and he's not very uh optimistic and he always plays everything down and that's what the market was nervous of and that's what happened and that's why even though we were down a little bit we weren't really down that much even though when you listen to jerome powell yesterday he was you know it wasn't pretty it was pretty hawkish you know um and we kind of expected that and that's what it did delivered there were there were no surprises there was no disappointment and that's why um i thought it was going to happen and it happened and that's the market thought it was going to happen and it happened there were, there, there were generally no shocks here we were i think everyone was kind of hoping that it was going to give uh a little bit go a little bit more dovish on on what he was going to do going into 2023 and um, when listening to Jerome Powell, I had uh, CNBC on yesterday from seven o'clock and I, I watched uh, the whole Federal Reserve all the way through it just to see what they're saying and listen to Jerome Powell all the way through it. And um, th there was no change. You know, we, we know that he's basically this year gone. Oh, we didn't inflate. We didn't expect inflation to go this high. Um, and also from the Fed's point of view, they've been very slow to put interest rates up previously. Um, and now it's gone to a point of view where rather than being over you know like over promising and saying oh yeah we, we're going to slow it you know interest rates down in in, in 2023 they just the fed jerome powell just left themselves loads of room to still increase interest rates in 2023 they were like yeah we could still you know our main priority is getting inflation down we still see that potentially we go up to five percent on interest rates and if anything, they gave themselves even a little bit more room than previously the last minute to actually take interest rates up a little bit higher. So they, they had no kind of, um, they really gave nothing away about slowing interest rates down or potentially calming down. They were still giving themselves a lot of room to carry on, you know, hiking up them interest rates in 2023. And that's not what we wanted to see. That's what not the market wanted to see. That's not what I wanted to see. Uh, and that really didn't really excite the market. Um, and I guess the other thing as well with the Fed is that they, once again, they never really gave any clear path of what they were going to do. Uh, you know, they weren't going to say, oh, when we get to the next meeting, oh, we potentially could be lining up a, you know, a 0 0.5 uh, bait or 50 basis points hike, a 25 basis point hike. They, they weren't very clear on the long term, just that potentially they could be aiming for, you know, 5% above, which suggests more interest rates hike. And I think they actually directly got asked a question at one point what are you planning to how much are you planning to hike it up in you know the next few fed meetings and he, he totally you know dodged the question because that's what jerome powell's been doing he, he doesn't want to get committed into a timeline of the interest rates what was really interesting to hear jerome powell say is that 
um, and, and this is proven historically as well, all these future predictions that the Fed give, hardly ever do they come true. You know, hardly ever do they follow these predictions. They either get a lot worse than what's predicted or they get a lot better than what's predicted. And even at one point, Jer Jerome Powell went, look, basically, you know, things are getting a little bit better than what we were hoping for. And we are pretty much still down to a meeting by meeting basis. We don't go into the next meeting deciding what we're already going to do. Uh, you know, when we look at the uh, when we meet next time, which I think is like January, I think it's the back end of January, um, when we meet next time, we're basically going to go off what the new data is in January. So basically, even the Fed was saying like, if the inflation carries on coming down how it is doing, then we can have a little bit more assessment of actually we, we hold back a little bit, maybe we drop down to, you know, they didn't say this this part, you know, we maybe look down to drop to 0 0.25, um, but if, if they would drop, if they drop that into the, uh, into when they were speaking, you know, if inflation data is good again, uh, our carries on coming the rates that we're down, we see a 0 0.25 uh, next federal meeting. That would have got the market completely excited. But once again, Jerome Powell did not want to get committed into a timeline and committed to bringing down them interest rates. He still wanted to give himself a, a, a long runway. And because of that and not being, uh, having the time frame and the uncertainty that creates for investors, what do investors not like uncertainty? because it created that uncertainty. That's why the whole market just went, Ugh. you know, you look at S&P 500, it was like, oh, sell off. And it was a little bit annoying because obviously if we had positive news here um, from the Federal Reserve, from Jerome Powell, we probably would have seen a good rally into the end of the year and everyone getting excited for 2023, but because it was kind of not much given away, everyone was a bit like, oh, we'll just leave it for now. <laughs> and that's what happened. So. Um, yeah, overall, I mean, I, I do hope the Federal Reserve doesn't go crazy on the interest rates. You know, we know inflation's coming down. We know when they put interest rates up, it, it takes a while for it to come through the system. So uh, these, even 0 0.5 is a, a still, a, you know, historically quite a big hike. Um, so I, I'm hoping, you know, Jerome Powell and uh, the Fed, you know, they, they look at the situation and they look at January. And if, if January, we start touching, you know, 6% on that inflation data, I hope they do realise, like, we don't need to carry on doing this. We can, you know, 2023, maybe we go 0 0.25 next time. And then after that, we, we might slow down a little bit, zero, maybe, you know, 10 basis points or, um, you know, we, we go flat from there. I, I don't generally think the Fed need to, after... I'd say even March time, I don't think they need to be increasing rates any longer as long as that inflation is coming down. And I generally hope they don't carry on being too aggressive and then that pushes us into a recession because at the moment the economy has been holding up okay uh, and we, we've had a win-win situation where the economy is held up okay. Um, not amazing, don't get me wrong, but uh, and inflation is coming down and hopefully they, they kind of realise that situation and they, they don't go too far in 2023. Uh, that's probably the key thing. But the main thing for me that I've taken this way is that the main the main problem, inflation, um, is coming down. Uh, and, you know, we've, we've hit the 7% range. If we go down to 6, if potentially we could see 5, um, you know, by the, you know, March, April, May time, uh, and then we push into, you know, 4% by, by summer, um, that obviously would be absolutely brilliant. That, that would actually be below what the Fed is uh, projecting as well. So that's ideally what we, we want to see um, and we'll see if that happens. So overall, the, what I take away from this week, it's been a, a, good, a good week. Disappointed that the Fed didn't really give much away, but I didn't, I didn't expect it. I don't think anyone else expected it either. So yeah, that's, that's what I'd say overall. There wasn't really too much to kind of really talk about here. So uh, that's that anyway until, until January. A um, little bit of a side topic. I think this probably is, is worth a, a video on its own, but I just wanted to squeeze it in on, on the last two minutes of this video which is just Tesla. I mean, Tesla is just absolutely getting demolished uh, these last few months. I mean, this week, it's down nearly 9% this week. Even yesterday, it was down 2.5%. Um, and even after hours, look, in after hours, it was two, down 2.6%, nearly touching $152. We could be talking about $140 today if it carries on this downtrend. It just keeps going lower and lower and lower. The downtrend is unreal on Tesla. Last month, it's down uh, 20%. Uh, and the last six months, it's down 32%. And you look now from uh, the highs in the 5th of November, 21, it's down 61% unbelievable uh, and it's now you know say this was a trillion dollar market cap and it's now down to 491 billion now down at 48 times earnings it's getting so interesting obviously we know 
there's a lot of negativity around it at the moment. A lot of people are talking about recession, the demand. Uh, obviously, the Twitter situation, without doubt, is causing a lot of pressure. Elon Musk selling some shares, obviously, is causing more pressure on the stock. And overall, you see the negativity, you know, really starting to build on this stock. And, um, you know, for me, I, I personally, as you guys know, I've started to nibble a few shares uh, when it broke below the $200 range. Uh, and as I said in the video, you know, for me, I'm giving myself a massive runway on this. I, I generally thought, you know, we could be talking about 150 130 dollars uh so for me i was like i need to give myself a long range to make sure i average in on this one because when you're on a downtrend like this um it, it could get quite nasty uh so i've given myself a big uh, long runway here and um for me you know i always said if we can get into this 40 times earnings which is now starting to enter that would be absolutely amazing i mean if we can get back to this uh, october 2020 time when it was like you know 120 130 dollars that would be absolutely amazing i think that was, is a golden opportunity but you know i think everyone has mixed it tesla is one that has such mixed opinions you know uh you know people like this stock uh you know 300 400 dollars you know you saw on the youtube scene how many people were saying at 400 dollars it's still a buy and there's still crazy upside um, and you've seen people say oh tesla's only worth 17 dollars like it was in 2019 uh, i think that when you look at tesla i find it unless you're d it's deluded i guess uh I don't think you can argue that it's a great stock. It's a great company. You know, you look at the financials, look at the performance here, revenue up 55%, net income up 103%. It's been a phenomenal performing financial business. I, I struggle to see anyone that says Tesla is a bad company. I think it's a good company. I think the only thing that you look at this one is, I think the big argument is what you pay for it. I think that is the, that the that's the big question. I think everyone agrees Tesla, EV space, uh, you know, financially performing absolutely amazing. Um, sure, they could have a few problems going into 2023, but I think everyone agrees it's a good company. I think that the, the million dollar question is what you pay for Tesla. Uh, and I think that's what everyone's had a debate on. And I'd be interested to know what you guys think. What do you, what do you pay? I think everyone's got a price that would, they would be willing to pay for Tesla, whether it be, you know, $300, $200, $100, $50. I think everyone's got a price that would pay for it. And I'd be interested to see what you guys think about that. Uh, for me, I, I personally thought under the $200 range is where I get interested and start nibbling away. But I think between that $100 to $150 range is, yeah, that's a, a serious opportunity for me. And that's where I personally would like to buy it. But yeah, I think that it's just generally such a talked about one and an opportunity that a lot of people are staring at on this aggressive downtrend and keep going. It's going lower. <laughs> is it getting closer to where you buy? So um, yeah. Thought I'd just mention that one a little bit in, in the back end of the video because it, it's just been absolutely killed off recently and uh, I'm sure many of you guys have been been staring at this one and uh, looking at it maybe as an opportunity anyway. So that's the video for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, sorry there wasn't too much to kind of update you guys with because there generally wasn't, unfortunately, yesterday. Um, that's why I think I held off making the video in the end. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed the video anyway, guys, and uh, I'll catch you in a bit.